Uh, this video will be about spherical coordinates, and the goal here is to describe three dimensions in a different way, and hopefully we'll use this to uh, be able to integrate more regions uh, with triple integrals later on. But now, for now, I'll just try to help you get a little bit of a grasp what spherical coordinates are like. So there are three spherical coordinates, rho, phi, and theta. And the idea is that any point in three dimensions can be described with these three numbers. So rho represents the distance to the origin, which we would write this in the usual x, y, z coordinates as the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's what rho is, and phi. Phi represents something a little more complicated. This is the, the angle that the point you're at makes with the positive z-axis. So maybe I'll draw a little picture of that. So if we're in three dimensions, and we have some point out here, well again, rho represents the distance from the origin to the point, and phi is going to be this angle that we make with the z-axis. And finally, theta is the usual theta from cylindrical and polar coordinates, namely, if you have um, a point x, y, z, theta is the angle it's the angle between the projection of the point to the x, y plane and the x axis. So it's a little hard to describe that in words. Uh, it's the angle between the x axis and and x, y for a given point x, y, z. So this is the picture. Rho represents the distance from the origin to the point. Phi represents this angle from the z axis to the point. And theta represents the angle between the x axis and this projection of the point down to the xy plane. So you should probably think of this as we can sort of describe any point based on, um, you know, you could think of this as phi telling you you have some arm that you can move, you can move up and down, and theta tells you how much you can turn, and rho tells you how far out you can move, and you can sort of grab any point in three dimensions in this way. Let me give an example where I take a, an x, y, z point and convert it into rho, phi, and theta coordinates. So if we think about the point 1, 1, square root of 2, What is this in spherical coordinates? Well, let's see. If I plot this, I go out one that way, out one that way, and up a distance of the square root of 2. So there's the point. And now, well, it's easy to figure out what rho is. Rho is the distance between this point and the origin. So I'll just take 1 squared plus 1 squared plus square root of 2 squared. This is 1 plus 1 plus 2, all square root, so it's 2. And 
let me figure out theta first before I figure out phi. Remember, theta was this angle between angle between the x-axis and the projection down to here. So on the xy plane, if I just think about this part of the point, I have 1, 1, and the angle theta is a 45 degree angle, or in radians, it's pi over 4. So theta is pi over 4. And now to figure out phi, I have to look at this, this triangle here. So what is that triangle? Well, the base of the triangle has length given right here. The base is the square root of 2. So let me draw this triangle separately. It's sort of at an, at an angle of pi over 4 right here, and it's sticking out that way. If I draw it kind of flat, the base right here, which is this, which is this, has length square root of 2, because I have, um, by the Pythagorean theorem, and I said that its height was the square root of 2, and this again is a triangle with, with, uh, well, this would be a 45 degree angle, but the angle phi that I care about is this angle right here, which is this one right there, which will also be 45 or pi over 4. So for this point, the phi coordinate is pi over 4, theta is pi over 4, and rho is equal to 2. So that's how you describe this in spherical coordinates. Now let me mention some formulas that you use for going from spherical coordinates to x, y, z coordinates. Um, it helps to look at the picture again. So in, in spherical coordinates, we have some point. Its distance from the origin is rho. Phi is this angle. Theta is this angle down below. And I want to write um, what x, y, and z are in terms of rho, phi, and theta. So let's see, z, we can figure out from the picture by looking at the z-axis and, and this line here. I can draw that separately. I have an angle of phi, and I have a distance of rho. And this is a right angle here. This length here is z. So I'm just sort of drawing um, this triangle right there, but I'm flattening it for you. So z will be rho times cosine phi, because um, z is the adjacent side to this angle. Now, to help explain where we get how we get x and y in terms of spherical coordinates, it helps to actually write down uh, the quantity r from cylindrical coordinates and polar coordinates. So this is sort of an aside to help us figure things out, because r is the distance uh, from the origin to the point x, y, or since I'm drawing it in 3D, x, y, comma, zero. And this from the picture is the length right here. So it's actually, this is the length r. And since the length is opposite the angle, r is going to be rho sine phi. But this is sort of an aside, because we, we want to think of interchanging x, y, and z with rho, phi, and theta, and not including extra coordinates. So this is just to help us figure out what x and y are. But this is good because x, as you know from polar coordinates, is r cosine theta. So we know what r is in terms of spherical coordinates. It's rho sine phi. So r cosine theta 
is x. And y is r, this quantity here, sine theta. So these are the three formulas. These let you take, if you know the spherical coordinates, you can get the x, y, and z coordinates back. And this formula here is pretty helpful in a lot of situations, so that, that's also good to remember.